Hello and welcome to MIP TV. Um, with me is the veritable Bob Cook from the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy. And he, Bob is going to help us and review one of his most favourite books. And it's Modes of Therapeutic Action, I believe, isn't it, Bob? Yes, by Martha Stark. Yeah. What's, 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 titled you, what's titled you fancy with this book, Bob? Well, I've had this book for a long time, since it came out in 2000, actually. It's not a TA book, but it's one of my favourite books. And it became a really seminal book. Um, and if you go to most training institutes, you'll find that this book's on their reading list. Mm. Um, and it talks about um, modes of therapeutic action. And Martha Stark talks about three particular modes, which she calls mode one, mode one and a half, and mode three. Uh, mo very quickly then, mode one is uh, where the therapist or the analyst takes centre stage, um, where they will give inter interpretations, they will um, come in with techniques or like in TA, classical TA, everybody like liked interpretive techniques like game analysis, karma, triangle, but he'd come in with the interpretation, he'd come in with the treatment plan if you like mm. he he would be interpreting that he would be the uh, expert wouldn't he ah uh, he would be the expert and yes the client would come into the picture so that's why she would call it mode one because mm. the expert is there mm. the therapist is there and interprets the therapeutic process or the insight for the client mm. yeah uh, and really that was the sort of expert if you like um, process of psychoanalysis was set up with that it was very much one up one down if you like mm -hmm. it was the um, the analyst uh, sorry the client who through free association um, lying on the couch uh, with the expert giving a few interpretations um, was the major order of the day so that's mode one and uh, mode one and a half uh, which is really where um, the therapist comes into the picture and does talk about the history of the client, and the client comes into the picture, but more from a uh, the therapist still looking for the deficit. So the therapist may self-disclose, um, but it's usually in a more like a reparenting school, if you like, or a reparenting process where the therapist still doesn't really um, share the counter transference or talk about what's happening in the relationship. So the relationship still isn't the focus. It's more of a focus, but it's certainly in a developmental process. Uh, it's still not going to bilateral exchange, really, between the therapist and the client. Um, and then in 1992, you got the uh, revolution in psychotherapy where most schools of thought started to see the focus of the relationship as a vehicle for cure. Um, so uh, the third mode is just um, basically both the therapist and the client being in a relationship together and where there would be the therapist would have a focus on that relationship and bring their own selves into the relationship and also encourage the client to share the power in the relationship. Yeah, and this is what we call sometimes call a co-created relationship, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. And um, I think that's where you see a lot of the uh, focus from many of the different psychotherapy schools heading mm. to, a, to a, the therapist and the client being the focus through the relationship, uh, which is called mode two. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it really tracks the arc of, of, of the relationship within psychotherapeutic um, yes. work through yeah. through being very, very expert-led right to the point where um, it's now co a co-created relationship okay. where the client and the therapist collaborate together for the benefit mm -hmm. of the clients. Yeah, it's quite a... I think it's about 250, 300 pages. Uh, she cites quite a bit of research. And it's... Um, 
very important for um, psychotherapy trainees or students of psychotherapy looking at what you've just said, the history of the relationship um, and the fo up to date now we're focusing on the relationship as cure. Back in, of course, pre-1940, it was very much about how the analyst stayed out of the relationship rather than being in the yeah. relationship. It's a complete sea change, isn't it? You mm. know, from even moving from even using the term analysand, which was which was what was used, wasn't it, for clients yeah. who were called analysand, to clients, you know, mm. it's a more equally a power. Well, it, it's, it sounds a fascinating book, Bob, and I'm guessing for a trainee or even a practitioner, it's going to be really useful just to see just how it's changed and that important sea yeah. change that you mentioned in 1992. Yeah. Yeah, if you went into a psychotherapy bookshop pre-1930, 1940, you wouldn't find any books talking about the relationship between the therapist and the client in an equal manner. Mm. All the books would be about how you stayed out of the relationship. Yeah. So yeah. it's a real sea change, as you said. Yeah. And this is a fabulous book, and Marta Stark is really uh, well-known. She writes well. And even if you're not a student of psychotherapy, but just interested, like you just said about the development of the use of relationship in the therapeutic process, it's a very valuable book. It sounds it, Bob. And what we'll do is at the end of this video, we'll put a we'll put a picture up and the title. And if you go to the link below, click on the link below. We'll oh. go. Uh, you can click on and go to a distributor who sells the book. Very important to mention that. This isn't a paid placement or a paid promotion. This is just Bob and Miss it, me talking around um, Bob's favourite books. So thank you so much for sharing that book, Bob. And, um, and we will see you in the next one. We will. And we'll be up to number uh, 13, I believe, because this is number 12. It is. So we'll see you at Book Review 13. Thank yes. you very much. <laughs> okay, see you. Bye-bye.